The van got off at a gig in Paris. Come with us on tour. I'm afraid I can't. But I think you very well could be the next John Coltrane. And what are you gonna be? If this is love... WNAT Television. I learned about the assistant producer position. Are you married? Yes. Hey. The producer's assistant's not the best job for a housewife. Why should I hire you? Because I didn't know that a Negro woman television producer even existed. <laughs> and all my life, that is all I've ever wanted to be. Hi, Eugene. How are you today? Hey, what's up, Jazzy? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, congratulations on such an amazing film. Sylvie's Love is so, so dear to my heart. I love it so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. You look like you're about to be at the New Year's party at Sylvie's Love. Ooh, like my life. Okay. Come on, ask me a part two. I'll take it. No, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, after reading the um, director's statement, I see that you implement a lot of your personal life into the film, you know, with you being an ex-recording artist at Sony yourself and, you know, seeing old pictures of your family members that influenced this film. So when making this film, what's been the most rewarding for you and the most challenging? Um, just being able to bring the vision to life. It's just really, that's the most satisfying. And then trying to be the vision, bring the vision to life, trying to get it funded and trying to get the money to make it was really, really challenging. And then, you know, dealing with schedules of people and, you know, trying to get certain people to be involved and then them showing up at the last minute, like, I can do it. It's like, a, it was a roller coaster. Wow, sure. speaking sure. of showing up and doing it. Let's talk uh, Nandi and, and Tessa. How was it working with them and getting them to not only act in it, but to produce as well both of them yeah i mean that was really really came out of the fact that we were all aligned in the same vision from the beginning so it was a natural progression for both of them to be producers on the movie too because you know look the bottom line is they could be doing movies that were a lot bigger budgets than this but they decided to really come on board and do it you know which was great you know tessa of course is in marvel movies and all this other stuff so you know, it's not like she did it for the money. So it was really great that she really believed in me and, and was, you know, it's just, she empowered me to be able to, you know, to create something beautiful. And, and she was a really able collaborator. And Namdi really put his company on the line to to produce it. You know, if, he, if we hadn't gotten more people to come in and, and, and bring cash into it, he would have been on the line for us. So he was willing to do that and I appreciate that. So it really is a, a true independent movie. Wow, we love that. So the synopsis also says a sweeping story that brings together changing times, changing culture and, a tr and the true price of love. So I'm asking you, what's the true price of love, Eugene, in your own words? The true, I think the true price of love is allowing yourself to let someone go if it means they'll be happier without you. And what what happens is, is that they realize, of course, at the end that, you know, it's exactly what she says. I don't want to give up the movie, but <laughs> now you understand what the last line is about, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, before I let you go, I have to ask, at the end of the film, I saw it says for Diane, Nancy, and Doris. Yeah. Who are these people? Please tell me, enlighten us. So Diane Carroll, who we know from Claudine back in the day, Nancy Wilson, whose song opens the movie, and Dars Day, who is a very big uh, inspiration to me. And she had movies like That Touch of Mink that came out during this time in the 60s. But all three of those women, and she also sings um, Fly Me to the Moon when Sylvie's walking through her, her new office. That's Dars Day singing. So all three of those women, we lost them. In, in 2019. And I always thought like I was gonna, I had seats ready if there was no pandemic, it was would have been, you know, they would have been front row sitting in the movies watching. I really wanted them to be able to see the movie. And unfortunately we lost them all in 2019. So it was natural to dedicate the film to them. Thank you for doing that and amplifying black women voices and talents. We we really appreciate that. While I did not know that it was dedicated to them exactly. So that's beautiful. Before I let you go, please, one word, if you can, to tell the people to go see it. What would you just what would you describe it in one word? Sylvie's love to go check it out. Just um it's it's 
it, it's all the feels you need right now. You know, after this long year, <laughs> you just want to just get, if you want to get transported to a different world and a different time with beautiful people and beautiful clothes and a beautiful story, just watch it on Christmas day. Mm, the feels, the feels, Dolly. Thank you. I'll take right. that. Thank you so much, Eugene, for a great interview and enjoy the rest of your day. Happy holidays to you, Jazz. Thanks to you. <laughs>